Candid, captivating, compelling. Welcome to Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina. Listen in as Dr. Dina, medical marijuana pioneer and inspiration for the award-winning TV series, Weeds, shares never-before-heard stories, chats with cannabis insiders and celebrity friends, and provides invaluable perspective and insight into one of the fastest-growing industries in the world. CannabisRadio.com proudly presents Cannabis Confidential with your host, Dr. Dina. Welcome to Cannabis Confidential. I'm your hostess with the mostest when it comes to cannabis and hash. I'm Dr. Dina, and welcome to my podcast. You guys have been so loyal, so wonderful, sending me wonderful messages of encouragement to keep the show going, and so I will continue to do so and bring you the bombest guests, of course. Well, today is no exception. We have the one and only La Ganja Astranja. Yes, God, honey. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. D. What's the tea? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, you are the one person that for some reason hasn't been on my podcast, but someone that I adore and who I'm friends with in real life. Imagine that, Instagrammers. Well, Beautiful. I'm glad we're changing that today then. Yes, now we're making it official for the whole world to know. Yes, we love that. So I want to give my, my uh, listeners some, some good background. Obviously, okay. people can Google you. And if you check out your Wikipedia page, which congratulations, Wikipedia staff. Well, actually, um, if anyone out there knows how to edit Wikipedia, I would love some help because the photos that are up on my Wikipedia are hideous and they're from years ago. I'm like, what's the tea on that? <laughs> All right. So, any any uh, uh, computer techies out there? That's you right. Have some techies, reach out. Help a doll and help. get a better photo up on that Wikipedia, please. Okay, but but it's even more impressive because you have a page, right? And obviously, Laganja Estranja is not the the name that your parents put on your birth certificate. No, no, it was not. <laughs> but, that, but that would be pretty epic. That would be epic. I, I don't think they would have even been able to come up with that name, but you know. <laughs> but you know, you are an incredible choreographer, not to mention dancer. I mean, your dancing skills are through the roof. I mean, Thank you. you're unreal and you do it in heels. So that's right. Just like Miss Ginger Rogers, I do everything a man does, but backwards and in six inch pumps. Isn't that the truth? I, I yeah. actually took a, this is actually funny. I, Maybe not funny to everybody else, but for me, I, I have two left feet, all right? So I'm really not mean? a ballroom. Oh, I'm so awkward. I, I think I inherited it from some people in my family. I will not mention whom. But like when um, the rap music's on, you can't like kind of like, you know. Oh, I can up. like, I could do that. But yeah, like, I'm talking so. like ballroom dance. Well, like, hell, I can barely ballroom dance. That's one of the hardest but like, techniques. Le ever. But like steps, learning steps. You know, <laughs> like you choreography. choreograph. Oh, I cannot do that. I can, okay. My brain just cannot grasp it for some We're going to have to get you in Laganja's dance school then. That will be the funniest thing ever. Anyways, it, it'll just be me fall. I can't even wear heels, so I'm going to fall over. Anyways, I, I took a dance class with my husband before we got married because we want, wanted to make sure we had our first dance and it looked good, okay. right? Sure. And I was thinking, oh, I'm, we're doing it for him. He needs the help, right? Yeah. Clearly it was me. As soon as we got into this place, I, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. My husband caught on in two seconds. But the worst part is they teach the man the steps first, and then they teach you to do it backwards, exactly what you said. Right. It's so crazy. My mind doesn't work like that. So if you I see know. me leading, you know, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's very you. She's a leader. So I want to know about how you got into dance and how you it really created this persona that is unbelievable as uh, Laganja Estranja. Well, sure. So, you know, as a young boy growing up in Texas, um, I was automatically different than most of my peers, uh, mainly because of my love for musical theater and the arts. Um, 
But dance was something that I think I always knew I had a passion for when, once I was placed in my first dance class. Now, obviously, being a boy, that wasn't the route my parents tried with me first. You know, I did sports, um, but I really hated being outdoors. I always complained about how hot it was. I was like, I just wish we could do something inside. So eventually, my parents put me in my first ballet class, and I just felt immediately at home. You know, I was surrounded by females, which automatically made me feel more comfortable. Uh, I myself I'm very feminine so being around that energy it just felt right um, obviously being able to stare at myself all day in a mirror didn't hurt either you know she was living for that fantasy um, so yeah I would say probably around seven that was when I really decided like okay I want to be a dancer I want to do musical theater art is the way and like my parents stopped trying you know to put me in different activities so pretty much from seven till now I have been you know in the arts and entertainment industry and that's been my passion and my love language and I mean literally my everything it's it's pretty much all I do um, and then Laganja kind of came about I would say well, the, the spark of Laganja obviously happened at the end of high school when I tried cannabis for the first time. Um, back then, my friend Lauren Glenn, who introduced me to the plant, really introduced me, introduced me to it as a way to be creative in the dance studio. So I went to an arts magnet school, uh, Booker T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts. And so after school, we would have a lot of rehearsals. And so my friends and I would go and get medicated and then come to rehearsal and dance. So, you know, from the very beginning, cannabis was really seen in my eyes as like a medicine or as something to, you know, create a positive effect. I never really saw it as like a recreational drug. It wasn't until I moved to California and went to college that it became more of like a party thing for me. Um, but it was towards the end of my college career when I was dropped on my back during a dance piece that uh, I started seeing a chiropractor um, for the pain and for realigning my hip. And he was the one who actually suggested that I use cannabis um, medicinally for pain management. And that really like opened my mind to a whole new world. Um, and I really began to realize the importance of cannabis in my life uh, on the daily. So not just for having fun or not just when I'm in pain, but like daily use. And that's why when I became a drag queen, I wanted it to be my platform because my whole life I was always told the one thing. And when I discovered it was another, I felt like it was you know, my duty to share this knowledge with others. Uh, and I think any good drag queen has a, pro a platform to stand on and not even just drag queen, but really any good, you know, um, person in the media who has a platform, they should have something behind them, a cause, you know, like I think when we look at beauty pageants, like that's what we see, they always have a cause. So for me, cannabis, it was just integral to, to my career and that's why I chose it. And I love that your your music video that you did, was dedicated to people that are incarcerated for cannabis. Yes, so you're talking about Look At Me, which I released last year. It was my first single of the year. Uh, and, and correct, instead of making just a typical drag video where I looked fabulous, uh, I wanted to, yeah, make a statement and make a point. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I'm a white male. I'm very privileged. You know, I'm lucky that I haven't really had any run-ins with the law. Um, and I think that if I you know, was a person of color, that would be very different. And so since I've been given this opportunity and this platform uh, due hugely in part to cannabis, I feel it's important that I get that message across, you know, um, that there is such a disproportionate amount of people being arrested and still kept in jail. And then of course it goes even further from that, you know, which I didn't get to talk about in the video because I don't think I really quite understood back then. But now, you know, I've learned that people who were incarcerated for cannabis once they get out are not even allowed to get jobs in the cannabis industry they, they basically been barred from their own industry so you know there's incredible organizations like equity first who are you know fighting for these individuals and trying to get them equity in these businesses that they really deserve to be a part of so you know I'm always trying to just talk about these things because it's really important you know it's great that we all can get stoned and have a good time but it's not great that it's really hurting this other you know, these other communities. And um, there's still, you know, like so much that needs to be done to repair the war on drugs. So, you know, my video is a very, 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 very small amount, but I hope that, you know, it did create an impact and it did educate, you know, others that maybe are not so familiar with the, you know, instances that are going on. Yeah, it's educating a whole nother group of eyes that maybe just didn't know about this before. 
Yeah, I think, you know, because I'm at the cross section of, you know, two subcultures being the LGBTQ community and the cannabis community, I get to educate each community on each other. So it's really cool. You know, I think it's important, especially in the cannabis community, that there is someone of my, you know, stature who's out there representing for the community and saying, look, it's okay to be gay and smoke pot, you know, because I think a lot of times um, there's a lot of bro mentality, you know, in the industry, which I've definitely, oh, absolutely, made. I definitely know, you know, that because you've been one of the people to help me face that fear. So thank you. For and that. we're, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but we have to run to a quick break. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the one and only La Gunja Stranja. Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina will continue after a word from our most confident sponsors. Cannabis industry professionals want to gain some new leads, make genuine business connections, and get premier brand exposure? This is your opportunity. NCIA's new industry socials are coming soon to Portland, Maine, New Jersey, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, and Miami. Sponsorship opportunities available. Register today. Hey, take a look at this. They're selling smart pots. <laughs> they have pot that can make you smart? Where is it? Not that kind of pot. Smart pots are the best aeration container to grow your plants. Check this out. This is the original fabric container for faster producing, healthier plants. They're made with a superior fabric that delivers high yields. Plus, smart pots are reusable and sustainable, so you can use them over and over again, no matter if you use them indoor or outdoor. That's very smart, but how good are they for the environment? Smart pots are BPA free and lead free, so you'll always be able to ensure a pure, clean grow, and they're 100% made in the US. Over 28 million smart pots have already been sold so it seems like a smart investment look for smart pots in close to 2,000 garden centers throughout north america and ask for the original fabric container find a store near you or order yours online at smartpots.com educate empower and engage in the evolution of the cannabis industry join thousands of industry professionals on august 3rd and 4th in miami florida for the return of the u.s cannabis conference and expo inside the hyatt regency in downtown miami register before may 1st for an early bird discount of 50 percent off now at usccexpo.com that's usccexpo.com join us for the 2019 u.s cannabis conference and expo august 3rd and 4th in miami register now at uscc Expo.com. Dr. Dina is back with more Cannabis Confidential only on CannabisRadio.com. And we're back. One and only Laganja Strunja. So we're talking about the bros of the cannabis industry and what it's like being feminine. Right. In, you know, around it's this. It's even about being gay, right? It's just about being feminine because females yeah, have it. it just as worse as gays. Yeah, it's probably, maybe not. I don't know. But tell me your experience, because this actually is how we first met. Yeah. So, correct. So, we first met um, at a cannabis cup, right? And um, I, you know, had just really first started getting my toes wet, my heels wet, if you will, in the cannabis industry. I hadn't really been to many cups, um, you know, even though cannabis has always been linked to my brand and who I am, uh, it definitely was hard for me to really get into the industry. And I think that's a lot of it because I'm very self-conscious. You know, I'm from Texas and I was grown or I was raised to not act feminine because you'll get made fun of. So, you know, it's something that's kind of ingrained in my body already. Um, but then when you are at these cups, you know, it is, it is a lot of straight white males who have sort of, yeah, a bro mentality, i.e. women should be in, you know, crop tops serving me weed at these things. And it's just... I don't know. It's very just putting to me. I did not really like it when I first started going to the cups. And that's why I was so happy, you know, to meet someone like you, to meet a female who's in the industry, who has a voice, who is respected. Cause I think that's another issue. You know, there are a lot of females in the industry who are killing the game, making incredible products, but because they're females, they're not really, you know, respected. Whereas you come with the fact that, you know, you've got the weeds, the Nancy bought one, you've got the Snoop Dogg, you know, you've got these things that I think bros recognize and uh, acknowledge. So immediately when I began hanging out with you, it was like I already had this like street cred, you know, because it's like, oh, well, you're hanging with the real one. So I don't know. It's just like even just in that alone, there's so many things. Well, that we the irony about. here is yeah. that back in the day uh, before legalization hit, 
there were really no like rules about growers. It was very confusing. No one really understood. No judges understood. There were no like, this is how it works. And if you got caught with a bunch of cannabis, you're going to be in trouble, right? Right. But, but if you had a dispensary that had a license, say, let's say you knew that you know that person and they actually work with you, like they've yeah. sold you product, you know what I mean? And you stick up for them and say, no, they, they work with us. Then that person will get out of, get out of going to jail. Right. That happened to us several times and we helped a lot of different people. So That's I remember bringing you when we went to that event, I think it was Chalice, right? It was, yeah. It was Chalice. And bringing you to certain companies and you said, oh, no, no, I went to them before. They didn't want to talk to me. Right. And I was like, no, 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 no. They're going to talk to you. And then I inter made an introduction and I, I definitely felt that there was a little bit of a difference. I think that's just the people in the industry are scared of outsiders and they're scared of change. Sure. You know, well, and especially an outsider like me, who's so loud and unapologetic and in your face. And that's what it is, is that you have you know. no apologies. You are who you are and you don't give a shit. And that's the best part of you to me. Well, thanks. I mean, you know, it's taken a long time to get here. And I always tell people, you know, I faked my confidence until I believed it. Um, but sometimes you have to do that. It's just the truth. You know, it's a learned pattern, like anything, you know, someone who bites their nails, I always tell them, well, if you can learn to bite your nails, you can learn to have confidence. It's the same thing, you know, it's, and it did, it took me a while. Like I remember when I performed at my first cannabis cup and, you know, I took my clothes off and did my normal Laganja routine and it did not go over well. And I was just so, oh my God, I felt horrible. You know, I, I, I remember turning to my manager at the time and, and saying, look, I, I don't think I can do this. And she was like, oh, honey, did you think being an activist was going to be easy? Like, you're going to feel uncomfortable, you know? But I have, I have been so blessed that, you know, many women, such as yourself, have really taken me under their wing and have really, you know, made me not only feel accepted, but made me feel celebrated, uh, which I think is really special. And it's not to say there haven't been guys in the industry who have also taken me in, of but I would, I would say nine times out of 10, you know, it is a, a woman who is running a, a cannabis business that takes me in and that really has supported me. And that's why I always try, you know, to give back to the, the female community. I mean, my whole job is literally impersonating, you know, women. So and I think that's why women just love you so much because you know what? At the end of the day, most men don't know what it's like to walk in those types of heels right. or wear a corset or put on mascara or makeup or whatever. Well, and, I mean, that's, you know, that's it. we get it. Like we, we can bond over this. Well, sure. And I think what's even more interesting is that, you know, yes, we can bond over all of these physical things that we put ourselves through to appeal to mainstream society. But I think moreover, what's important is how we get treated. You know, I never really thought about how a woman was treated differently than a man until I became a woman. Do you know what I mean? I mean, of course. until my best friend and I were dressed up like whores trotting the street and then getting treated that way. You know, it's like, I didn't realize a lot of things until I really did physically step into what it's like to be a woman. And even doing that, I'll still never be able to fully understand because I don't have a menstrual cycle. I don't, you know, birth children. I mean, there's still so You're many- You're so uh, missing out on cramps. Let me just tell I you. don't think I'm missing out on that, but I would love to give <laughs> birth to a child. I mean, I do think that's one of the most amazing things in this life. And, you know, it, it does make me sad. I can't, I'm very that. I would love to have a child, but I, I just- You don't think, have to give birth to have a child. I know, I know, but I really want it, and I want water birth, and I'm like, oh, I'm uh, crazy, uh, you know, I'm God. crazy. You I are just, crazy. I just am very feminist, and I just think that, you know, we have to stick together, and so that's why, you know, I made it a goal of mine to align myself with females in the industry, because I really do think that our voices are stronger together, and Eventually, I think when women and gays come together, uh, we will outpower those white men, you know? So it's just a matter of time before we- It's not just the white men. It's just the men. <laughs> True. True that, sis. True that. True that. But yeah, I mean- I think, We love them anyways. We do love our men, so. You know, it's very, like Britney Spears said, can't live with them and can't live without them. Exactly. <laughs> I love how you quoted Britney Spears on that have to. I'm barefoot outside right now, just like she would be. Oh, 
Gosh. And you have your head shaved. I don't have my head shaved. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I have a lovely design shaved. No, you have your pattern. Exactly. Yes, my Versace Greek key. But maybe she was trying to do that. I don't know what this thing is going through. God bless her. Free Britney. Yes, I do love Britney. But that's that's actually one of this thing that keeps like it hurts me when people talk about it on the news, like Britney's crazy or Britney's, you know, just whatever people are saying. And, and I say this often, it's like, if you have a a disease with your kidney, you could openly talk about it. It's no big deal. But if you have a disease with your brain, it's like the stigma and like you're crazy. And absolutely. I definitely think there's still a huge stigma around, you know, mental health, which is kind of, Really, my other big cause that I think I talk a lot about, um, you know, obviously on RuPaul's Drag Race, I had a full mental breakdown, a full panic attack on TV. So I'm kind of known for being mentally unstable, if you will. Um, And I am. I'm very, I'm open about it because, you know, I was raised by two counselors and uh, every day I'd come home from school and they would be like, how was your day? How are you? You know, so I grew up wearing my heart on my sleeve. Of course, you're emotional. Yeah, you share, you share your emotions with others. That's okay. It's beautiful. And I think also, again, kind of going back to that bro mentality, it might be another reason why those types of people find me hard to digest is because I am so, you know, open and vulnerable with people. Even if I know that they're not featuring me, I'm still going to smile at them and I'm still going to try to make them get to know me, you know? And the and reality I- is, though, that you guys have a lot in common. Yes. You know, and you all like smoking cannabis. So it's like everyone just needs to get over everything that they have issues with people. Just go smoke a joint. Correct. I think it's just all about education and exposure. You know, I think more and more people are coming out of the closet that are working in the cannabis industry. You know, and I think that's really important. I think there have been a lot of people who have been closeted for years in the industry because they felt that it would hurt you know, their position if people knew their sexuality. Um, and that's and now why it's, it's now it's being more embraced. Absolutely. It is. And that's why I'm trying to like be out there and be on covers and be doing things. So people know, look, it's okay. Like you can be gay and be in this industry. You don't have to be scared anymore. In fact, we need you. So come out, be loud, be proud. And you know, if more and more people will do that, I think people will realize like, Oh, you're not that different than me. Okay, sure. You put something different in your mouth and me that night, but that's it. Like that's it. <laughs> we both want love. We both want security and home and family. I mean, it's it's all the same. We're all the same. So We're all I the think same. when people can realize that, you know, it's going to be a lot better world to live in. Agreed. On that note, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back, and we will hear more from Laganja Astranja. Cannabis Confidential with Dr. Dina will continue after a word from our most confident sponsors. Educate, empower, and engage in the evolution of the cannabis industry. Join thousands of industry professionals on August 3rd and 4th in Miami, Florida for the return of the U.S. Cannabis Conference and Expo inside the Hyatt Regency in downtown Miami. Register before May 1st for an early bird discount of 50% off now at usccexpo.com. That's usccexpo.com. Join us for the 2019 U.S. Cannabis Conference and Expo August 3rd and 4th in Miami. Register now at usccexpo.com. Expo.com. Oh, let the marijuana llama tell you something now. Bought a game for your phone, gonna make you say, wow. The game's about the game of growing cannabis for cash. Grow the seeds till they bud, put the savings in the stash. Little by little, your empire grows large. Put the big celebrities inside your entourage. You can choose to play with Snoop or me or Chichin Chong. Cypress Hill, Willie Nelson, Wiz Khalifa with a bong. The name of the game is him pink, that's the point. Download and play while you light yourself a joint. The business of cannabis should be no crime. Hemp Inc. is even hot proved by the man who run high times. Oh yeah, get it on Android and I and iOS today. Marijuana Llama out. Got to tend to me on crap channel. Money don't make itself. Hemp Inc. Hey, take a look at this. They're selling smart pots. <laughs> they have pot that can make you smart? Where is it? Not that kind of pot. 
Smart Pots are the best aeration container to grow your plants. Check this out. This is the original fabric container for faster producing healthier plants. They're made with a superior fabric that delivers high yields. Plus, Smart Pots are reusable and sustainable, so you can use them over and over again, no matter if you use them indoor or outdoor. That's very smart, but how good are they for the environment? Smart Pots are BPA free and lead free, so you'll always be able to ensure a pure, clean grow, and they're 100% made in the US. Over 28 million Smart Pots have already been sold, so it seems like a smart investment. Look for Smart Pots in close to 2,000 garden centers throughout North America and ask for the original fabric container. Find a store near you or order yours online at smartpots.com. Dr. Dina is back with more Cannabis Confidential only on CannabisRadio.com. All right, and we're back. Jay is over there taking bong rips. Yes, have to, wake and bake. Love it. I'm, I'm a little jealous, sitting here with my microphone, just enjoying the sounds. No, I'm trying to find what I'm even smoking on, but I don't see what strain it is, but it's very dark purple. It's probably- I have, I have, I have a nice jar, wait, hold on, I found a jar here. Uh-oh. Ooh. There we go. Oh yeah. I, think I know that looking. sound. Popping jar. <laughs> you know that one? Let me hear that one again. That's the tapping out the bowl. Oh, your ta bowl tap. You know, I kind of gave up bong loads. What? Yeah. Why? I, I stopped s smoking flowers. I'm okay, so see, I went through that period too where I was only smoking the dabs, but then, I don't know, one day I was like, man, I kind of miss smoking flour. And then I got sent this great bong and I was like, okay, I'm into this. <laughs> like I smoked with you. We smoked together. That was That's like, right. we smoked yeah. flour. Yeah, we smoked flour, but the, I haven't since. No, I take that back. I did at the Grateful Dead concert because, you know, it was the great. Oh my Dead. gosh, of course you went. Was it fun? Dead and Company. Amazing. Great oh, show. I saw the traffic and was like, get me out of here. Oh, Mary. the traffic was horrendous. If anyone has ever been to the Hollywood Bowl, and you know that traffic. It's a nightmare. It is a nightmare. And we and took an Uber they and it was just lot where they do it all up with the Grateful Dead stuff. Oh, uh, well, some pe people were calling it the lot, but I it was isn't it like, like Dead yeah, Alley, Take Down Alley, or something? Or yeah, something like that. I saw all them setting up. I said, "Oh Lord, it's about to be a night." It's a night. Yeah, I I feel like I might have been one of the only people not tripping on acid, just by the way everyone was dancing. The same kind of like rhythmic motion i'm like i don't know what's going on but it's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i'm getting old um no, you're getting more established <laughs> oh, you're too sweet you're too sweet so what kind of projects do you have right now since our listeners are going to be tuning in to watch you and i want to hear all the deets well, as you know, it's Pride Month. So, you know, I'm very busy doing a lot of uh, different gigs. In fact, tonight I'm speaking at the W Hotels in Beverly Hills. We're doing a Queer Me Out panel. So I'm really excited. Bunch of different LGBT people uh, and different, you know, aspects of the industry coming together to, you know, have a panel and discuss what it's like to, you know, be gay and be in our different industries. So obviously I'll be focusing on cannabis and what it's like to be gay and in that industry uh, and then of course I have a bunch of performances around this month as well I'm also releasing a new edible with fruit slabs which is uh, all vegan gluten free natural fruit leather we uh, are releasing a pride flavor but instead of it just being for this month because we think pride should be celebrated year round uh, it will be in stores you know from now on and the flavor is passion fruit mango with a lemon lime twist so they are five, yeah. yeah, five five milligrams each. So it's for the can of curious, not very strong, obviously. Um, so it's perfect for mom and dad, and yeah, they're really delicious. So I'm super excited to to be launching that. I also have some new music that I'm going to be dropping as well. Um, I think I'm actually finally going to be releasing the album that Look At Me, what we talked about earlier, the single came off of. I think I'll finally be releasing that album. So I'm very excited to release that. Uh, and incredible. Course, I'm moving. So I'm moving to Denver. I'm going to be teaching dance out there and working on uh, just finding some happiness you know i really want to focus on myself i've been traveling so much as an artist and i kind of just want to 
take a moment to, you know, breathe, find some namaste. Uh, so yeah, so while there's a lot of projects coming on, I'm also trying to find balance too. So where can people find you online? You can find me across all platforms. That's YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr. Uh, what am I forgetting? I mean, Facebook. Literally, if you can think of it, I have one. And they're all at Laganja Astranja. Ah, amazing. So very easy to find. And your website as well. Go Laganja check out. Astranja. That's, That's right. right. Go check her out. She's amazing. And uh, you are known for your death drop. Yes, yes, yes. That's my famous move that I did on uh, season six of RuPaul's Drag Race when I entered the workroom. It's a crazy move that it actually comes from the ball culture. The uh, correct terminology for the move is dip. Um, but, you know, I did add my own little spin on it, and uh, it has been seen now on many shows, uh, including Skin Wars and Bong Appetit, uh, and So You Think You Can Dance, which I'm currently on right now. So if you've Got a TV? Be sure you're tuning into Fox on Monday nights at 9, 8 central to catch me on So You Think You Can Dance. This is so cool. Everyone go check. And you, you're doing this season differently because you were on last season, right? That's right. So last season, I went as Laganja in drag, um, you know, because I really wanted to make a statement for the community. And I really wanted to show Nigel that, you know, men can be feminine, but still be incredible performers. So this year I went as myself um, because I really wanted to prove to myself that I didn't need a gimmick, that I have all the talent, you know, as Jay. So uh, obviously I can't say what happened, but uh, I can say that I'm really excited and I'm very happy. So definitely tune in and check it out. All right. Well, congratulations again. You're my weed warrior of the week for getting Yay! the word out, spreading the love and the messages of not sending people to jail for cannabis. And of course, I have my nonprofit called freedomgrow.org where we raise money. We put that money directly on the books of people in jail for cannabis, for their commissary, and we help provide services through Can Do Clemency to help get them clemency, to get them out home with their families where they belong. So Jay, thank you again. It's been so wonderful having you on Cannabis Confidential. I wanna make sure everyone gives us five stars, a bunch of thumbs up, shoot this to your friends, share with everyone you know, because we got to get the word out. And of course, I want to thank my amazing producer, Brasco. I wouldn't be able to do it without you. And thank you, Cannabis Radio. Today was a wonderful show and I can't wait to come back next week. The opinions expressed on this CannabisRadio.com program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of CannabisRadio.com. Any rebroadcast or redistribution without proper consent of CannabisRadio.com is prohibited.